Chévere, bueno, agradable. I'm a very fan of the original Power Ranger. I have all the figures. Yeah, I love it. So I know that you, you have a great career and you started at early age with gymnastic competition, championship. Can you tell me a little about that and how you jumped into the acting career? Well, uh, I just started, I was a very hyper kid, like I had a lot of energy and so uh, my, my teacher at school said to my parents, you should put him in gymnastics, he'll probably do really good at that. So I just started gymnastics, but at the same time, uh, at seven years old, I uh, was in my first school play. And from the time that I was in that play, I thought, oh, I want to be an actor. So growing up, I always did every school play and local play that I could, and I went to college and uh, got a degree in theater as well as communications, and, um, and then moved to LA to be an actor and just got very lucky uh, and landed Power Rangers. And it, it melded the two, me being a gymnast and an actor together. So it was really cool. So all those skills in gymnastics helped you get the part of the Power Ranger, yeah? I mean, ultimately, yes, because they wanted uh, actors that were physical a martial artist, a dancer, or a gymnast. So the fact that I was a gymnast helped me steal the deal, as they say, on the roll. But I heard that it was not as easy to get a part, that you had to do apply for another character, something like that. It was not as easy as... Yeah, no, it's not. It, <laughs> it wasn't easy, for sure. But uh, no, I originally uh, auditioned for the role of Jason, the Red Ranger. And I had three, uh, I had three auditions for that role. Um, but I realized I was not going to get that part because I could tell which direction they were going. And so I begged to read for the role of Billy and they told me, no, uh, you, don't, you don't fit the character breakdown, you're not right for Billy. And I begged and they said no. And, uh, I, I begged again, I went, I went into the bathroom and I wet my hair down and I borrowed somebody's glasses and I buttoned my shirt crooked and I came back and I said, please let me read for this role. And they were like, oh, okay. And so they let me read it, and then I had five auditions for the role of Billy. So never give up, right? <laughs> never, no. And that's why I like to tell that story. It's because so often in life, we're told no. And if you believe in yourself, and you really know something uh, in your heart of hearts that you can do it, you should do everything in your power to, to get that opportunity without being crazy. You know? So uh, yeah, don't ever, Don't ever give up on yourself if you know you're meant to do something. All right. So we know that you're, you were famous for playing that character, Billy, the Blue Ranger, the original one. So in the original script, did, there was something that you add to the character. You said something about the glasses right now. You put something through the years to the character that or original in the script. There's one of the, is what your spice, something like that. Do you add to something to the character? Uh, well, I mean, I just... Uh, I don't know if I put spice in the character, I just became the character. It's like, as an actor, it's so important, uh, if anybody's out there and you want to be an actor, uh, it's so important to take acting classes in character development, so that you learn how to create the character. Um, and so that's, that's what I did. I went to the bathroom and quickly created the character of Billy and embodied it. And then that's when they said yes to me. So it's... Uh, It's just important. I mean, I could see all the other actors that were auditioning for Billy, and I could tell they weren't saying the lines right. They were all missing one very important line in the audition. And I was the only one that was actually seeing it on the script properly, and I think that also helped me get it. So um, you just have to pay attention and just know the character. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So uh, at the beginning, Power Ranger was nothing big. Nothing famous, you applied for the, the part, you got it. When was the moment that you realized that this was something huge? It was a huge success, this is something big. I'm famous right now. When was the moment that you realized that? Uh, I mean, it came in waves because we, we originally shot the whole first season almost before the show even started airing. So we shot like 40 episodes 
we really had no gauge of how the show was going to do or whatever, but from the moment it aired, it, it shot to number one, uh, not only in the United States, but throughout the world, it seems like. And, uh, you know, we'd start uh, getting recognized on the street, like, oh my God, you're the Power Ranger. Or, uh, but the, the big moment, I think, for all of us is in Los Angeles, um, we, did a, we were scheduled to go do a live performance at Universal Studios in Hollywood. And uh, we were supposed to just go do like one little small stage show. And uh, then the crowd started coming to the, the Universal Studios and they started having tons and tons more people. And they're like, okay, we're gonna have to do a few more shows than one. And then suddenly it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And then uh, we shut down the freeway uh, the big road in Los Angeles and 10 miles each direction, uh, which is unheard of because so many people were trying to get to Universal Studios to see the Power Rangers. Uh, and I think their capacity at the time was 30,000 people. And they actually had to shut down Universal Studios because they couldn't allow any more people into the studios and they had to start turning people away. So they moved us into the big theater, which is probably like, uh, I'm gonna say at least 10 times, if not bigger, the size of this. It's gotta be bigger than that. But it's just like a huge amphitheater that you would go see a concert at. And we did six or seven shows that day, packed every time. Nice. It wasn't me, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, that's, I think that's when the original cast, when we knew that our show was a huge success. You know that everything is not going to be the same. You're already famous at that moment. Yeah, but even when you start becoming famous, at least for me, it's, it's still hard to comprehend. Like, you know, you, you go out in life and you go to the grocery store and you go shopping and you kind of forget that you're famous and you start wondering why are people staring at me you know but uh, so you have to remind yourself oh yeah i'm on tv so. and you never imagine that because of that character that franchise you're gonna be traveling the whole world coming to puerto rico meeting fans inspiring new generation you never thought that you're gonna be in this place well when you're trying to be an actor right Right, I mean, uh, obviously being a Power Ranger is extremely humbling. Is it my microphone that's causing all the trouble? I, I don't know. Every time I talk, I feel like it goes crazy. When I change? Um, and this one's really loud. Okay, so, Lo Santo. Uh, like right about here. Okay, uh, what was I talking about? Being, uh, traveling the world. Okay, so, uh, yeah, never in a million years uh, when I first got the show, Power Rangers, would I have ever thought, here I am 25 years later, still talking about Power Rangers, and still getting to meet amazing people like you, and hearing all the stories that we get to hear about how Power Rangers influenced so many people's lives, and gave you confidence, and made you feel good about yourself, and maybe got you into martial arts, or gave you the confidence to go do what you want to do. I mean, me getting to play Billy, the smart character, uh, I get to hear so many amazing stories about people growing up being nerds and uh, feeling like they didn't have any friends, but they, they could relate to Billy, and Billy gave them confidence to try to make friends. Uh, or they became doctors and scientists, and um, they, I even have one, uh, probably more than one fan, but at least one fan that became a paleontologist because of Billy, so he studies dinosaurs, uh, which I think is really awesome. So, you know, to get to hear those stories uh, for all these years and that it just keeps going is awesome. And now you guys are starting to have kids and you're introducing your kids to the original Power Rangers and uh, it's really neat to see so many little kids relate to the, the old school Power Rangers more than they relate to some of the newer ones. So, it's very humbling for me. Remember that later we're going to be, it's going to be answering all the questions. So. Later, a line in the middle, try to get to everything. So, the first time you read the script of the Power Ranger, by that time, you don't know about big robots, uh, I don't know, aliens, everything. What was your, through your mind? Oh, what about this? This is great, this is for me. Okay, I know that you, to get a part, you, you try everything to get it. You love what you see, but it could be. Um, I don't know that I... I don't think any of us really, when we first started doing the original pilot and we got the original script, we didn't really understand what it was we were making. Because it was like, what? Robots? We become dinosaurs? We have, we have to wear the same color every day? That kind of stuff. So like, 
we didn't quite understand what we were doing when we were filming it, but then once they cut the original thing together, we saw it and we were like, okay. You know, we weren't sure how it was going to go. And if you've ever seen the original pilot that didn't air, uh, but you can find it on YouTube, uh, it's quite a bit different than how the show actually, you know, the show actually progressed a little bit more from the pilot. Like, I never wore the glasses that I wore in the original pilot. I looked a little bit different. So, you know, little subtle changes um, we made. But yeah, so we didn't quite, I should only speak for myself, I didn't quite grasp what I was making. But I was just happy to be a working actor in Hollywood. That, that was a big deal. That was the big thing. And you were, and all of you did like 40, 60 episodes in a row before going to air. So you think you didn't know exactly what's going to be the final product? At that Correct. Point? Correct. I mean, as we were filming it and then they start editing, editing, it, editing it together, we would have to go into a sound booth and put our voice over like the costume character or if our lines got screwed up, we'd have to go in and correct our lines. Um, so we started seeing what it was gonna look like when it was cut together. Um, but still, yeah, we were on the fence because to us, sort of as adults, it looked a little like, I've never seen anything like this before. Are people really gonna respond to this? But from the moment it aired, I guess it had uh, every element that kids love, you know? What was a normal day shooting the show? So, come and search on the fight scene, the school. What was a normal day shooting the, the show? Well, we shot um, four episodes at one time. So, what we would do is like we would go to the command center and we would shoot every scene that takes place in the command center for those four episodes. And then we would go to the juice center, the juice, youth center, juice bar and we would shoot everything for those four episodes in that set, and then we'd move to the high school and do the same thing. And then eventually we'd get out on location and have to film our fight scenes when the putties come and attack us and all that. So, uh, you know, so we would do that, and that would take two and, a, two and a half weeks to shoot four episodes, which is very fast, a very fast-paced uh, shooting schedule. So, you know, we usually, the girls usually started at 5 a.m., and the boys, We'd come in at 5.30 or 6, and then we'd shoot to at least 7 o'clock at night. So we had 12 to 15 hour days, typically. So how many episodes or seasons you were through the end? How many seasons? Well, the seasons end up being different for what you guys see. I think in theory, I'm only in four seasons, but filming-wise, it was five seasons. And I did 200 episodes, and the feature film with 20th Century Fox. There's a difference. Thank you. There's a difference. And, and I'm the only original ranger to be in 200 episodes consecutively. So like everybody else either got replaced or they weren't in all the episodes. Like Jason David Frank came in late and then he, when we did Alien Rangers, he wasn't in Alien Rangers. So uh, I was the only one in Alien Rangers. So I hold that title. Uh, oh, whatever. J Jason, Jason Frank, he likes to say, yeah, I've been in the most episodes. He's got me beat like maybe five episodes because he's, he's gone back a few times. You were in a row. I was in a row. That's hard. That's a much harder, a much, much harder achievement, yeah. So, uh, you did the, the first Power Ranger film. Is there any difference uh, in the process of recording, doing everything, the acting? between the show and the movie? Uh, it's not so much, it wasn't so much different in terms of what we had to do as actors. It would just like takes a lot longer to make a movie and our sets were a lot bigger and grander and we had a bigger budget. And, um, but in terms of acting and filming, I, I wouldn't say that it was too much. It was, wasn't too different. Uh, the issue for us with the movie is that we uh, went to Australia to film the movie and we were only supposed to be there for three months to film it. And then uh, things, the studio, 20th Century Fox, wasn't really happy with what we shot. So we ended up having to replace an actress and then start reshooting the movie. So we were actually there for six months, which made us not be able to film the TV show. It delayed that. So what they started making us do was film the movie and film the TV show at the same time 
which is very confusing and very stressful and there was a point where we were twenty one days twenty one days straight with no days off so just twenty one days and i was filming the movie and the tv show together it was crazy it was crazy another achievement not one that i'm proud of but yes it, it was an achievement for sure so can you tell me i know that you're real life you're friends with kimberly the big ranger amy joe johnson yeah uh, that you challenged her something or uh, she was doing a movie you made her a challenge but then she challenged you to something can you tell me a little about that story Sure, I mean, Amy Jo is a very talented woman and uh, she uh, wants and is now a director, but she wanted to direct a, a film and she was trying to raise money for a film that she wrote and uh, so I said, you know, I, I thought obviously we have such amazing fans and you guys are dar die hard and I think most boys, Kimberly was your first crush growing up. Uh, it's true, it's true. <laughs> be honest, be honest. <laughs> So, uh, or Billy was your first crush, it doesn't matter. Uh, so, so um, I just thought it would be a good idea to put it out to the fan base to see if they would help her raise money. And in order for her to get their money, she had to put on her pink Power Ranger outfit and go out in the streets of Toronto and play her guitar and sing songs. So it worked and uh, a lot of people donated to her film and she made a lot of money and, uh, but, as we say, don't, if there's little kids, cover your ears, because I'm gonna say a bad word. But uh, as we say, payback is a bitch. And so uh, she, took revenge. she took revenge on me and dared me to go out on Hollywood Boulevard, where I live, and uh, walk up and down the street and take pictures with people. Uh, so yeah, not, not cool. So be careful when you, uh, you know, try to get your friends, they'll probably get you back. In the same way. Oh, yeah, I did it. I did it, and it was on one of the hottest days we've ever had in Los Angeles. Literally, uh, it was 106 degrees the day that I had to go on Hollywood Boulevard. So I'm wearing spandex. It was a miserable. Not even no like you guys have nice breezes here. No wind whatsoever. It was just dead hot. So, wow. Yeah, but I did it. Your campaign. Your campaign was for the a movie. The movie, the order. What's the status right now? It's on hold. I'm like everybody else. Uh, I don't. It's on hold. So I'm just an actor on the film. Uh, it, we we were rehearsing. We were all ready to start filming, and unfortunately, one of the actors in the cast called the union, which is fine. It's a union show, but whatever they said to the union made the union shut down the film. So. You know, I, I don't know what that actor's motivation was in doing that, uh, but anyways, it shut down the film, and uh, we got everything squared away, but unfortunately, in shutting down the film, the producers had to pay some fines, and so it took some of the money away from the budget, and now trying to get everybody scheduled to line up again to be able to film it is sort of what's yeah, probably going it's on. A big cast, it's, it's a big cast, so uh, I'm not really sure what's going to happen but it, I'm assuming will happen, hopefully this year. Well, those, uh, don't know, that project was uh, like an indie movie, action movie with all, many Power Rangers, right? That was the- Power Rangers from different seasons, yeah, but it has nothing to do with Power Rangers, other than the actors used to be on Power Rangers. And, and you're a fan of the comic books of Power Ranger? Boom Studios, yeah. And the uh, Shattered Grid right now, this. Shattered Grid is part of Boom Studios, yeah. So, you love that story, you read it, I've read them all. I, I mean, I really like what Boom Studios has been doing with the uh, the comics. If you haven't read them, check them out if you if you can find them. Uh, they're really good, and there's two different versions. There's the Go Go Power Rangers and just the regular Power Rangers. They're both excellent. Um, and now it's getting into Shattered Grid, which is great. But for me, it starts getting confusing now because they're introducing way too many characters. So uh, yeah, it's like oh, okay. So I hope they're careful with that because I think you can lose a lot of people when you're jumping around so much. But uh, you know, and Shattered Grid was it was really good, and uh, they're going to keep going. So, but leading up to all that, everything they did, I I really am a big supporter of Boom Studios. All right. So, any opinion about the last movie, the reboot of the Power Rangers? You saw it, you like it? An opinion? Your yeah. Character in the movie. 
I, I loved it. I thought they did a really good job. Uh, I hope all of you got to see it. If not, download it or find a way to watch it. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I thought they, they did a good job. There's little things that could have been different, but like they should have played the theme song a lot more and longer. That's what really gets people excited about Power Rangers is that theme song that uh, the composer Ron Wasserman made so many years ago that really, I think, also helped our show because that's what you guys, you know, like when you when people see me out in public and they're afraid to come see, come up and talk to me, off in the distance I'll hear somebody go, do, 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 do. That's how they try to get my attention. And then I'll turn around and they'll be like, oh my God. So, <laughs> that's to verify it's the real you. That's the yeah, that's the way they figure out if it's really me. So, uh, yeah, I hear, and you know, people have that as their, uh, you know, they download it on their phone, so if they get a text, they'll hear that. And sometimes I'll be traveling and I'm in an airport and I'm in the bathroom of all places, and I'll, I'll hear that thing go off. I think it's funny. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but going back to the film, I thought they did a really good job, and, um, you know, I was really proud of the actors and, of course, R.J. Kyler, who played Billy. Uh, I always say I'm like a proud papa, a proud dad, because I just thought he, uh, he did such an amazing job with Billy. And, I mean, I, I saw the movie. I was at the premiere uh, with everybody, and uh, I cried when Billy... I don't want to spoil it. I, when, Billy, when, Billy, yeah, when Billy dies, I cried. I was like, what the hell are they doing? What's going on? <laughs> How can they kill Billy? But then we see what happens. Uh, so you know, I just I thought it was really well done, and I, I was really proud. I I wish it would have gone better so that we could have had a sequel, but um, I don't think we're going to be getting a sequel. But who knows? Now that Hasbro has taken over the franchise, maybe there'll be a sequel. So let's talk about what you did be after after the franchise. I know you became the producer. Can you tell me a bit about that? Sure, I mean, like, just from being on Power Rangers and filming so many episodes in the movie, uh, I paid attention a lot to uh, what was going on behind the scenes, uh, not just being an actor, and I'm, you know, I have interest in producing stuff, so uh, after leaving the show, I just started working behind the scenes and uh, quickly moved up to being a producer on a lot of reality TV shows uh, in the U.S., and I don't know where else... Some of them, I don't know where they air, but I'm sure you got them in Puerto Rico, uh, but probably shows that you don't really like to watch. Uh, but, you know, and then I'm also uh, a location manager, um, and I've worked on numerous scripted comedies as a location manager, so, uh, you know, I get to work a lot behind the scenes, and I still act every now and then as well. And you have, a, like, a clothing line? I do, I have a clothing line. Sure. I have a clothing company as well that I started with two of my business partners. It's called Affirmative Clothing Company, uh, which is loosely based, obviously, on uh, my character Billy saying affirmative all the time. So that's sort of where the idea came from, but I wanted to make sure that we were putting a positive message out into the world. And so what we say at Affirmative Clothing, a clothing company, is embrace who you are, believe in who you are, affirm who you are. So, you know, that's so much... At least I'll speak for me, like in my life, I had to learn how to accept and embrace who I was uh, and be comfortable with myself. And then I had to believe in myself. So I go out in the world and I believe in myself, believe that there's nothing that I can't do. And then I affirm myself by getting it done. So that's what affirmative is all about. From that line of flow, do you have something here selling something or not? No, I don't. I couldn't bring them here. There's all kinds of rules, which I don't quite understand. So I was not able to bring any of my merchandise. I would have loved to have sold some of my stuff here. Um, so I, I didn't understand, because I feel like you guys are America to me. I want you to be America. You should be the, you should be the 51st state. We gotta get that switched. Unless, unless you don't want it. I mean, that's, that's your choice. But me, coming from the States, I feel like you guys are our state as well, and we should be treating you guys much better. I apologize on behalf... <laughs> I, I apologize on behalf of our government for not stepping up to the plate and just really helping this island out. It's such a, tra it's such a tragedy and travesty, and uh, I retweet, I follow, I 
follow one of the governmental puerto rico ah things on twitter and i always retweet whatever they post about how we still don't have electricity all that kind of stuff so i'm so sorry and i wish there was more we could do there is more we could do i just don't know how to make people do it for you so i'll work on it yes so anyways in my clothing company i wasn't able to bring it here because of tax laws or something i, I didn't quite get it so uh you can buy it online uh, at uh, affirmativecc.com so and that's all on any of my social media sites on my facebook twitter and uh, instagram you can find that uh, right now it's the 25th anniversary of the franchise power rangers 25 years any plans going back uh, i know that you want to go back for the reunion recently. Uh, you have, don't have plans with them, going back, celebrate something, something cooking. Yeah, I wish. Uh, uh, I, it's not that I didn't want to go back. I'm happy to go back and do Power Rangers. But again, I'm a union actor, as most of the original cast were union actors. And it doesn't make sense for us to break ties with our union to go back and film Power Rangers, which they do non-union. Uh, not only financially does it not make sense, it just uh, breaking ties with your union just to do that, it's very difficult. The union can make it difficult for you to get back in the union. They can fine you. Uh, it, it just makes things more difficult. But that being said, uh, I and the original cast would love to do, this This should have been the year. We're at 25 years. They should have brought the original cast back together yeah. and made a reunion episode. We hear it over and over and over again, but they don't listen to the fans. They keep, they keep trying to make these reunion episodes that don't really work. So they did one a few years ago, and they brought back Rangers from different seasons, and it was, I never watched it, but I heard it was, eh, it was okay. And they're, they're doing something similar this year. So I don't, they asked me to come, but again, I said, if you film at Union, yes, I'll be there. And they said no. They're not filming at Union. I said, okay, I'm not going to be there. And I also want, you know, I don't want to just go back and just stand there and say a line when they haven't explained where my character has been. I mean, when I left the show, I went to a planet called Aquatar. So how do I suddenly just appear with no explanation? What happened? All these yeah, what happened? Where, where was Billy? How many kids does he have? Who did he marry? Is he traveling around? Does he live? What planet is he on? That kind of stuff. So those, those are things that I think the core fan base of Power Rangers, the ones that have stuck with us from the beginning, would want to see, not just my character, but all the original characters. So, um, you know, I think they really should have taken the time to do that this year, but they, they chose not to. And the last time that you put the, the full costume of the Blue Ranger, what was the Boulevard Challenge, or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to try to avoid that. I, yeah. I'm older now, and uh, I probably don't look as good. I don't look as good in the spandex as I did in my 20s. So, you know, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't really have a desire to to wear spandex. Um, but you know, for the right moment, if if we were supposed to do a reunion episode, and it called for me being in spandex, a reunion episode that I would want to do, and it called for me being in spandex. Of course, I would put the spandex on. We like to hear your question. You can get to the center. Let the mic. Yeah, yeah. Jump, jump. So remember oh, that we go. one question per person. Let me change it. Okay. So you can get to the center, middle line, to add your question. But just be. Uh, can we start the line back? Uh, back, 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 all the way to the girl in the uh, next girl. That way, we're not blocking anybody. I don't want to block anybody's view when we line up. That's all. There we go. They're fine right there. I just don't want to block anybody's view. Okay. All right. We're waiting on a mic. You can use mine, just in case. Spanish. All right, let's see the first question. Um, uh, this is kind of a tough question, but I, I really wanted to know, 
given the circumstances that caused you to leave Power Rangers, how do you think that situation would play out today? Say it one more time. Given the circumstances that caused you to leave Power Rangers, how do you think that same situation would play out today? The reason why I left Power Rangers? Yeah. Okay. I thought you were saying the word costume in there, so I was getting no, confused. Okay. So, uh, I don't think I would have to leave. For those of you who don't know, whatever, when I left Power Rangers, I left Power Rangers because I'm a gay guy. A gay guy. And uh, at the time, in the 90s, that wasn't exactly accepted, and we still have a lot of work to do now, but back then it was certainly not accepted, and so I went through a lot of issues with that. But it's 2018 now, and I think a lot more people are accepting of the LGBTQ community. And uh, I think that I would be able to keep my job and not be fearful that I would ruin. I mean, the, the rumor was that if, if most of America found out that one of the lead actors was gay, it would ruin, tank, the show. Because people were very unaccepting of gay people. So that was a lot of pressure for me to take on and to have to listen to all the rumors and it made me hate myself. So uh, I don't think we would experience that today. I think it would be a lot more accepting. And the fact that in the new movie, they hinted that Trini might be lesbian. I consider her questioning her sexuality. I don't think we really ever understood that she was really a lesbian. But um, so I think that just shows the progress that we've made. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Gracias. Thank you for coming, uh, Puerto Rico, especially after all we've been through. First of all, like, uh, not a lot of people wanted to come here, so that, that's the first thing I want to say. Thank you for being here. And, uh, De nada. Yeah. <laughs> so my question is, for you obviously worked in, a, in the four, first four seasons with a lot of different actors. Which of the cast do you, do you find that, like, you work best with, or who's your favorite cast to work with? Well, I mean, I think for me, uh, the one that will always have the most uh, specialness or the closest to my heart will always be the original cast, um, just because we went through so much together uh, as actors and as people becoming famous together. Um, and we know how much hard work we had to do. Like, all the actors that come after us have it a lot easier than we ever had it. Uh, we were electrocuted, we were set on fire, we, <laughs> we didn't have health insurance, uh, we were doing all of our own stunts outside of costume. I mean, we, we actually fought, it's like a lot of these new seasons, the actors don't even have to have any skills or anything like that other than maybe acting. Like, they don't have to fight like we had to fight. So, uh, you know, we went through so much together and we, we got to see experience the show explode together. So just always the original six will always have the most memories for me and the ones that I enjoyed the most. You know, once the once they started replacing people, it, it ruins the chemistry of the show. And so, you know, it's not that I don't get along with any of those people or I didn't enjoy working with them. I very much did, all the new people that came in, but it just changed the dynamic of the show, that's all. But the original six, is that okay? Originales seis. Okay. Yeah, seis originales, actually. Originales? Seis originales. Oh, lo siento. Seis, I want to learn. Seis originales. Yeah. Now the G as a P. P. Original. Originales. All right. I'll ne necesito practicar. Which Billy what? what? What side of Billy did you enjoy playing during the show? Like, for example, Power Ranger Punks? Oh, which episode? It, it, well, uh, I'm talking or you about mean, his, side, his side of his personality. I gotcha. Uh, I mean, I'm going to say, like, I always enjoyed, for me as an actor, it was always more challenging to play him normal, because he's smart. And, like, he always had these big words. 
and so I'd have to look up the words in the dictionary because I'm not smart and uh, try to figure out how to uh, make him sound somewhat normal. So uh, I enjoyed his smart side, his intellectual side, uh, all of his little gadgets. Um, it was fun to play Power Ranger Punk, so it was fun to be a punk and be bad. There was the episode where Blue Ranger gone bad, so there was two Billies, like a, I don't know, a knockoff. Yeah, so Evil Billy and Good Billy, that was, those were fun to film too. But just always playing normal Billy. You know, Billy had a lot of girlfriends too. And yeah, and uh, a lot of girls had crushes on Billy in the episodes, so those were always fun uh, episodes to film. Like Billy, the nerd out of all of them, had, I think if you really go through and you count, he had like eight or nine girlfriends. So it was pretty, uh, there was uh, one episode, I know, right? Uh, there was one episode where Billy had to speak at a, well, they went to the peace conference, but there was some kind of, Billy was speaking at another peace conference, I guess, and there was a girl, a blonde girl, and they were sitting out in the grass having a picnic afterwards, and that was, that was the Billy, I guess, I really like. He was, he was the, as we say, the Mac Daddy. <laughs> that answer your question? Más o menos? Yes. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> well, um, I also have one additional one. Okay. What franchise did you, what other franchise other than Power Rangers did you imagine yourself into? Acting in? Yeah, acting in. Mm, a lot. Uh, you want it to be like a, I mean, I really like Agents of the Shield. Like, I, I would like to work, work on that. Um, I'm just trying to think of ones that you guys would like. I mean, there's a lot of shows, like, do you guys get the show Shameless here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, that would be fun to be a part of that show. So, there's there's a lot of, a lot of different franchises I would love to be a part of. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Yeah, of course. I mean, I thought that was, as I was just saying a little while ago, I thought that was, uh, it shows how much we've come as a society uh, to include characters like that. Because there are a lot of autistic people or people with ADHD and people on the spectrum. So I was really happy that they did that with Billy. And I thought RJ really did a good job of portraying that. And again, with uh, the character of Trini, I don't know that it's totally for sure. Even though the director says Trini is gay. Uh, I just thought she was a girl questioning her sexuality, and I just, really, even if that alone, I just thought that was amazing. So it just shows how far we're coming, and we're bringing everybody into the mix. And uh, you know, we're all unique. We're like snowflakes. Not that you guys get snow here, uh, but we're, you know, we're all different in some ways. And so it's it's neat to get to see diversity. Well, just keep, if you, you know, I'm not, I don't want to force people into seeing people. If, if they don't want, if it comes naturally in a TV show or in a film to include uh, an LGBTQ character, awesome, and please, you know, don't hate somebody just because they're that. Just like, try to accept everybody as possible. It's like people always say, who's your favorite Power Ranger? And you can have your favorite, that's fine. But for me, it's like, I like everybody because each character I can relate to each character differently, and each character gives me something different. So if you can if you can see that in films and TV shows with all the different characters, like, you know, embrace it all. Thank you. No, thank you, and if you're a teacher, God bless you. Thank you so much for teaching the youth. That is that is a true hero, for real. Thank you. I think it was on Twitter that you tweet that you might, that you like to 
to um, to do something related with Power Rangers on Netflix. What do you, what are your your opinions about it, or what would you like to do if the opportunity if you have the opportunity? See. Si. Oh, you want to be real? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. I did say on Twitter. Uh, you know, I think somebody had posted. They were really happy that Hasbro has now taken over the franchise, and that person had wrote, hopefully now we'll actually get to see the reunion of the 1993-94 cast, the original cast. Uh, hopefully we'll get to see that reunion now. And I said, I would love to develop and produce that, and Amy Jo can direct it. So, of course, I mean, again, as I said earlier, I hear over and over and over again, I travel all around the world, uh, going to Comic Cons and from the fans, they want to have a, the original cast reunion. And as I'm saying, you know, like I would love to do that and really take the time to develop our characters and what's been going on for 25 years. Obviously, Trini, Twee, has passed away in real life, and I would still want to address that. You can still have that and include her in many ways. And I would make sure that she is honored in the highest way. Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, it's it's sad uh, for the original cast because uh, we would love her to be here and to get to experience this and just see her legacy and uh, how long it's gone on. So for all of us, it's very humbling to come around the world and get to meet you guys. And, um, you know, I, I just would love to give you guys the reunion that so many people ask us for. So I guess I better get my butt in gear and really push for it. And I think it would be great to have it on Netflix. I don't know if it needs to be a series. Uh, it could just be like one long, one hour, maybe one and a half hour episode, like movie type thing, or it could be maybe 12 episodes, I don't know. Uh, but just, I have to get everybody's schedule lined up uh, to make it happen, but I, I'll do everything in my power. If, if you guys really want it. Yeah. <laughs> better get to work. But thank you for your question. Hello, David. Hello. Uh, my question is for you, and welcome to Puerto Rico. Is, uh, what was your most memorable episode with the original Yellow Ranger? Uh, boy, you know, what was your favorite? Yeah, three. Uh, there, <laughs> there's several, but uh, the one that makes me laugh the most, and you guys laugh about it too, is like, um, I was, Billy was up on a, up on a ledge, and I think we had a fear, I don't remember, it was my character or Twee? No, it was her character. Her she had a fear of heights, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And so she had to come up there to save me, and uh, it was just funny the way that we filmed it. I know it looks like we're way high up on a cliff, but we're not. We're like down low, and they put the camera up there, but yeah. it, was, it was just funny, and the way that she kept saying her line, like she kept saying, Billy, you're too high. Everybody thinks that's funny because <laughs> it deals with 420 and smoking marijuana. She, she, and then she'd say, Billy, you're way too high up. It just, it was just, we were laughing so hard that day. So that's probably one of the most memorable episodes filming with her. There's, there's several. Uh, but she, uh, she, I, I take it for granted because her and Amy Jo are like my sisters. And, you know, the guys are like my brothers, so I don't really ever think of them like, oh, they're a good-looking, she's so beautiful, and he's a good-looking guy, you know, I don't really think of that, because they're like my brothers and sister. And so now when I look back, I just, like, I realize how beautiful Twee really was. She's, she was so stunning, and in all the photos that I see of her, I'm just like, wow, she's so gorgeous. So, uh, you know, she's, uh, she was special to all of us. And you her a lot, right? Of course. So do I, so do I. I know a lot of people she, do. She was my second favorite, next to me, Amy Jo. So Amy Jo was your first crush. Yeah. Twee was your second crush. Yes, yeah, exactly. I got you. I feel you, brother. <laughs> Thank you. It's all good. Thank you for your question. But Billy wasn't your crush. He was your nerdy, nerdy hero. I got you. I got you. There's no pressure. It's all good. <laughs> all right. episode in Power Ranger Seal, when you were supposed to be the Golden Ranger, and you didn't 
had the chance. I wanted to ask you if you wanted to do it, Chris, if you really wanted to do it, or you didn't have the chance um, in the set. To become a, one of the Rangers in Zero Ranger. Yeah, yeah no, uh, it was never uh, the producer, one of the producers came to me and just said, okay, moving forward, you're not gonna be a Power Ranger anymore. Uh, I'm gonna leave you on the show, but you're just gonna be in the command center. So there was never, I didn't have a choice <laughs> in the matter. You know, and in the long run, it's okay. And uh, you know, then they teased like Billy was gonna become the Gold Ranger uh, a lot. And, but it was never in the cards for me or the role of Billy to become the Gold Ranger either. So in the end, you know, how everything happens sometimes in life, it's for the good, for the better. So, you know, I quit, I quit the show. I literally walked off set one day and was like, I'm, I can't do this anymore. And uh, which forced them to figure out how to write Billy off the show because I was no longer there. Uh, and they sent him to a planet in outer space, which, in the end, I think it's pretty cool for Billy. Like, that that was a good thing. So, you know, sometimes things just work out, and I'm sure he's living a much better life, and uh, he's become a Zordon in his own way, maybe. I'm not, I'm not hinting to the 25-year anniversary, but he's become probably a Zordon in his own way out there in space. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, David. Uh, thank you for being here, first of all. Thank you. Um, my question is, I've probably seen uh, two episodes, honestly. I'd never, I'd never, um, I didn't really understand it when we were getting into it. I mean, I understood the footage came from Japan and all that kind of stuff, but they just kept telling us it's a totally different show. It's not like your show at all. And it is, obviously it's very, uh, their version is very dark and bloody and death. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not happy like ours, huh? Yeah, I know. I can I can go and watch it. I know. I'm just lazy. So, if so, if so, have you ever met any of the? Have you ever actually met any of the original Sentai cast? Yes, I met the red, yellow. No, the red, the red, black, and it must be pink. How you doing? Hi. Is it you can speak a little bit more into the mic? Ellie? Okay. Okay, we have a portrait uh uh for from the original Power Rangers. I'll be happy to do it when we're done with the Q&A panel, of course. So you want to take it and go when you merge the other original Rangers? Oh, he wants me to take it and me, you want me to do your work for you. Okay, I will, I will do everything in my power. Uh, I will take it and I will try to get as many people as possible. And then you want me to send it back to you. Okay. I know your game. <laughs> That's really cool. Can you give it to me? Thank you. I will do everything I can to get that signed by everybody. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, good. There's, there's no Green Ranger. <laughs> so I won't, I don't. I don't have to give Jason David Frank, that's good. No Green Ranger. I'm just kidding, I'll get Jason to sign it too. Oh, you have it already? Oh, well that... Well, alright, well now I'm bummed. Thank you. Okay. Hello. 
Hello. Gracias. Okay, okay. I want to ask you a question. Uh, what was the strangest episode you ever worked on or watched in the original Power Rangers series? Uh, every episode. <laughs> yeah, but like something like one where like uh, one of the Rangers uh, fighting a monster purpose. Yeah, I mean, I, there's actually, I mean, almost every episode there was something crazy about it, but the ones, the ones that kind of stick out to me was the eye guy, uh, where we were fighting a monster that was all eyeballs. Uh, that was really weird to, to work with. And then uh, the one, um, God, what's it called? Uh, it takes place at a carnival and uh, Billy becomes a cardboard cutout, and there's Pineapple the Clown. It's called No Clowning Around, that's what it is. So that one was by far the scariest and weirdest to film, but also a lot of fun, because we got to go to an actual amusement park and film and stuff like that, but that guy that plays Pineapple the Clown is a weirdo. <laughs> he, was, he was a trip. So uh, I'm just kidding, super nice guy. But, uh, it, you know, clowns freak me out a little bit, and he, he definitely freaked me out. But that would probably be the weirdest that I can remember in terms of filming. No, thank you. David, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Um, first, I want to say right off the bat, um, I'm openly bisexual, so I'm very grateful to know that one of my heroes as a kid also happens to be LGBT, too, just like myself. I couldn't help but notice that the being the Blue Ranger yourself, the color blue happens to symbolize loyalty, truth, intelligence, which makes perfect sense, and also confidence. Did you ever think when you were shooting the original series, what kind of impact would the character of Billy have on the viewership of the show? I don't think any of us really understood that our characters would have the kind of impact that it did. I'm obviously honored and humbled that the characters have had the kind of impact they have on you guys. So no, not in a million years was that ever something that was going on in my thought process. But obviously once the show started airing and becoming number one, uh, I think we started understanding that we have a responsibility in a lot of ways to make sure that we're doing everything in our life to be good people uh, because our fans are such young kids and you guys are very impressionable and so we wanna make sure that we're putting a good role model out there for you, not only on screen, but off of screen. You're welcome, thank you. How you doing? Good afternoon. I'm doing well. I was wondering, how did production change in the series as it went into the season, in the second season and they stopped having access to the original Japanese footage? So they had to shoot it itself. Did it change things for you and the rest of the crew? Because we ran out of Japanese footage? Is that what you mean? We had to start... Yeah, in the second season, you ran out of Japanese footage, so you, so you eventually you started the series. Film, started yeah, we started filming everything in the U.S. for the action scenes. So uh, I don't know that it changed from an actor's perspective. I don't think it changed too much because we would get the script and, like, in the original, we wouldn't necessarily know in the script that it was from the original show in Japan. It just kind of was seamless, and so every time we'd get a script, even in the second and third season, it was pretty seamless for us. But from a production standpoint, I'm sure it changed a lot of things, but as an actor, we didn't really notice the change. Is that okay? Yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello, it's me again, LGTG. Um, do you remember my name from Power Rangers for Sega Genesis? You have two voice lines. Listen to this. Is that you? I have no idea. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't hear it. It's from an episode. No, it's from the Sega Genesis game. Yeah, oh, from the this. Sega. System. <laughs> if it's you? if it's from the game, it's it's possible. I know. I don't know if it was specifically Sega, but. Uh, there's several games where they've actually used our, our voices, yes. The movie. And in the movie, yep. And, uh... Okay, uh... Let me think. I, and I, What's I, your I, worst I, fear? I think that was your Darth Vader? <laughs> no! Your oh. worst fear! What is it? Your 
Oh, my biggest fear in real life? Yep. Uh, not waking up. Dying? Yep. Well, it's potential, yeah. <laughs> well, my worst fears are bees. Really? Yep. I never got stung by one. And, uh, um, why did Sega stop making video games after the movie? Why did the video games win? Why did Sega stop making video games after the movie game? I, I don't know, maybe the Power Rangers video game didn't do as well as it should have. I hope, but I do want to say again, it's Luis, right? I love, Luis is wearing Billy cosplay from the original pilot. The first cosplay before the final version. Before it even aired, so he totally, he nailed it. Yeah. And one last question. Go for uh, it. What was your reaction when you were holding your head in the Super Nintendo every time you punch before you morph into the Blue Ranger? <laughs> Why was I holding my head? Yep. I think because Billy was still developing his confidence in fighting. So he was just like, oh, am I doing it? Am I doing it? Am I doing it? <laughs> you wouldn't mind me um, having that pose in the photo ops? Well, if that's the pose you want to do in our photo op, we'll do it. <laughs> it it'll be far. Um, and in the movie, it, it was like. <laughs> that's the dap. <laughs> uh, I'll see you at the photo op. Thanks for everything. Thank you, Luis. Really good to see you again, buddy. Hi, David. Hey, big fan. This is our last question. Yes. <laughs> Better be good. Okay. No, no pressure. Okay. Out of the 200 episodes you've been in, what's your number one favorite moment? I mean, jeez. I, uh... There has to be one. Well, I mean, no, there's a ton. I mean, it's just like, uh, I had so many awesome moments. You know, I'll just say, like, uh, the first season was amazing. Like, we had a lot of fun and a lot of hard work, and uh, just working with the original cast was awesome, because we did, like I said, go through so much together. And so that whole first season was a lot of, a lot of fun. And uh, filming uh, Power Ranger Punks was amazing, and uh, the episode Switching Places where Billy and Kimberly switch personalities, we had so much fun filming that one. So there was a lot of amazing, great moments. So I, I can't say there's just one, other than Jason David Frank me, making me eat a fly in my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That was a great moment. I'm just kidding, that was disgusting. Thank you very so, much, David. Thank you. So I, I want to thank all of you. Uh, I hope that you understand and you can feel from my heart how much it means to me like I'm truly truly humbled by all of you uh, I love you I mean that te amo um, you guys you guys have helped keep uh, the fandom of Power Rangers alive for 25 years now so that in itself is an amazing feat uh, that means the world to me and I know it means a lot to my co-stars and I appreciate that you've spent your hard working money to come here to Puerto Rico Comic Con today. That means a lot. Thank you for supporting uh, the great people at Puerto Rico Comic Con. And uh, if you haven't come to my table, please come down to my table. I, I don't know the rules here. Uh, I think you're supposed to buy an autograph to say hi to me. I don't know. Okay. Well, some people say yes, some people say no. I try, to, I try to tell people that it's okay to come up to my table and say hi to me. You don't have to buy something. There's no pressure. Uh, I just want to make sure that you understand that I appreciate you. So um, thank you. And uh, if you have a photo op with me uh, later today, I will be there in about an hour, I think. So please, we'll take a good photo. I think Luis and I are going to go like this. I don't know where Luis went. Um, but I'll, I have my morphers so we can morph in the picture. I have my helmet. You can hold my helmet if you want. Uh, or it can just be us having a good time, okay? So, te amo. I love you. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, I have a final statement. On behalf of myself and every fan here of uh, Power Rangers, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, because of you guys, I am here today. You guys show me through a lot. Just thank you for all the memories and 
for everything you've done. It will be continuing to do it, man. Thank, Thank you. you. That means a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it. And Ellie?